Ultra Hand and Tears of the Kingdom is a game changer. Quite literally, you can build anything your heart desires, and then you can give it life through technology to watch it do all sorts of insane things. And the Zonai devices really add a ton of dimension to what is possible. It's a very odd juxtaposition pairing mind-blowing technology with, uh, Caveman Link over here, who's just happy he could stick a rock at the end of his stick. And I think there's a lot of charm in the primitive works of Tears of the Kingdom. We often flock to the glorious wonders of laser shooting flying machines of doom. But I want to focus on the prehistoric angle. I'm talking rocks and wood. I'm assuming someone, at some point, will attempt a no technology Zelda speedrun. So let's talk about the most mind numbing, surprisingly effective, absurd builds that even a caveman can appreciate. Here are five combinations that any Ultra Hand enthusiasts are going to want to try out especially if they have technology fears like your boy Link here. I hope you enjoy. Breaking games is a specialized craft, and oftentimes it takes a while. So it's through the generous support of sponsors like Honkai Star Rail that make it all possible. The makers of Genshin Impact have released a new multi-platform RPG set in outer space. This free-to-play turn-based game can be played on either mobile or PC, and your data is synced between the two. Dive into a rich sci-fi world centered around space with intense battles and a robust storyline. The latest update introduces the highly anticipated character Jing Yuan, who is a general of the Cloud Knights. He's a bit of a laid-back dude, but in combat he packs a hefty punch, being able to hit multiple targets at the same time. His ultimate skill definitely will change the title battle in your favor as it crushes your foes. If you haven't checked out Honkai Star Rail, you're missing out on an immersive voice acted story with compelling combat and some great music. The character, Jing Yuan, just released. So click my link in the description below or in the pinned comment to download the game and take him for a spin. You can use my code on screen now to get yourself 50 Stellar Jades as well. And once again, a big thanks to Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring this video and supporting me as a creator. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to reveal our grand selection today. Starting with our first build of the day, the Quadro Slapper. Screw rockets, bombs, flying machines, and all of it. We need some wood on wood action. One of the most absurd powers that lots of players overlook is the combination effect of Ultra Hand and Rewind. Outside a building, Ultra Hand can be used like a 3D pencil that draws a line that your device is gonna follow. And this is where the slapper comes into play. Imagine, you have an army of a thousand people chasing you down. Okay, that's a lot. So imagine maybe it's a smaller amount, but you want to be ready in case you ever get jumped by a thousand people. This is when you're gonna need to slap some fools. Just like the olden days where parents did questionable things to their children by slapping them with a giant wooden paddle, we're going to use our caveman brains to build the Quadro Slapper. Patent pending. We're basically building a sideways windmill, my lads. And at the center, we're gonna have three wheels and a whole lot of wood. But we're going to tilt those windmill blades so they're standing upright. Oh no, the enemy has spotted us. Good thing we invested in a Quadro Slapper. We roll up with our bad boy, spin it around with our Ultra Hand and then drop it. Using Rewind, all those spinning motions become aggressive and the Quadro Slapper comes to life. If you slap the Bacoblin, you can slap a chop. Just be careful to not get taken in by all its glory because it will slap you, Link. And look at that, we beat the entire camp, slap by slap. Ignore Link's death. A quality build for anyone who's against advanced technology. Shall we move on? It's time for the Solid Snake. Ignore the name. I'm sure after what you've seen people build online, that name makes other things come to mind. But prepare to be blown away by a simple box. Don't be quick to judge, because with six wooden boards, you have yourself the most OP build of all. You think I'm bluffing? Hold that thought. This is the Solid Snake, named after a famed hero of legend who once hid in boxes. This moving box house is the pinnacle of van life, and we can take our home wherever we want. Forget to pay your property taxes and the city seized your house link? Well, would you look at that. I mean, I'm not sure it's an upgrade, but let's not sweat the details. Do you want to annoy your peers? Drop your house out of thin air on their property and then just hide inside. They will be so confused. They know they saw you, but now they aren't sure. Did I just see a caveman or was I hallucinating? Maybe he's hiding behind this giant moving wooden structure. Let me tell you, the best part about the Solid Snake is that you can move this house with you by using the Ultra Hand while inside of it. This continually breaks the minds of your opponents as their AI can't figure out what to do. Line of sight is broken continually, and enemies are reduced to the effectiveness of limbless zombies. And the best part about it is that the house also doubles as an arena. Got too many enemies to fight? Invite one inside for some tea and cookies, and then beat them relentlessly with whatever the heck you're holding. 
Let the anger out, Link. My god, you're a savage. With the Cell Snake, you have the ability to force opponents into one-on-one -on -one duels, while everyone outside just stares at your new prefabricated home. I'm like John Cena in here. The boss can't see me. We can get very, very close, practically touching the boss, and he is so confused. Is the boss taken aback that something so magnificent is in front of them? Is it the premium lumber that we use? The boss is trying to push us, but we will withstand. Our house ain't going nowhere. Just don't get pushed into like the weird gloom stuff because then it'll eat you alive from the inside. And hey, you wanna make your house a little more dangerous? Attach some spikes to the end. Mmm, glorious. Look how effective this is. Now these enemies don't see you, but they're continually taking damage and they don't know why they're getting hurt. If you don't see the power in this, man, just open your eyes. I cannot recommend the solid snake enough. Onward to our next rocky build. Mom, can I have a stone talus? Honey, we have a stone talus at home. Introducing stone talus at home. What's better than smashing an enemy with a rock? How about dropping a meteor on them? Boy, do I have the perfect build for you. You know how these chunks of sky islands fall all around Hyrule? Well, in some areas, we can grab several of these sky island pieces together to form a massive chunk of rock. And with auto build, we can then duplicate this massive rock and then put it back on itself. And then we can do it again. Eventually, we reach the maximum number of objects that can be held together, and we are left with this giant meteor held together with green glue. It's just like a stone talus that Link killed and used rewind on. Nature is healing. Have your foes run in fear as an ominous shadow is cast overhead. When your target is locked, initiate a drop and let it rock. Literally, because it's a rock. Smash all your foes with this massive structure. The stone talus at home is perfect for the gambling man. Because honestly, every time you drop it, it's a roll of the dice. Sometimes it hits and does a little bit of damage, and other times it does a massive amount of damage. But due to the uneven structure, sometimes you can trap enemies underneath it if they don't get squished. It's absolute chaos. This build is best used by climbing on top of a nearby object so you can increase the drop height, thus increasing the impact force on the ground. If you get lucky, every single rock piece will explode with green energy after a hard impact. And this seems to increase the damage it deals. Wow, look how painful that looks. Disclaimer, it is not recommended to use Stone Talus at home with large creatures nearby, as it can push Stone Talus at home onto Link rather forcefully. Man, what smells so good? Uh-oh, it's time for the pan of pain. There's just something special about a frying pan made of lumber full of deadly spikes. The pan of pain is a spectacular multi-use tool that was actually quite frustrating to produce. There's a limit to how many items can be attached to each other, but in order to duplicate items like a set of spikes, you must first stick them together and then use auto build to bring both of them into existence. In order to keep the object count down, it's better to then attach the dual spikes and break them apart until you get this circular shape. We can then duplicate this half, add a handle, and voila, the pan of pain is complete. Just look at this painful interior. Wow. This legendary build is designed for strategists that want to mix up their battles. By grabbing the handle, we can drop this torture device onto any foe, trapping them completely. Not only will their AI get screwed up, but if we hold onto the handle with Ultra Hand, we can move the pan around, continually damaging them inside. They can't escape, and they take constant damage. It even works on bigger foes like Moblins. For them, we can just drop the pan on their head. Hold up, let them cook. Automatic damage and enemy logic is completely broken. And bam, the lag goes down. Uh-oh, are you facing a tough foe out in the wild? Want to add some spice to your dish? Drop the pan of paint on them and then add a metal shield for some flavor. Thor will do the rest. Crispy, just the way I like it. What's that? Surprise attack by the Yiga clan. More like the Yiga pan. Flip the pan of paint over and catch those Yiga brass as they fall out of the air. And add some mighty bananas to your dish for some zest. Just don't try to cook a frox in the pan, as they really love eating kitchenware. On to our next build, the log trap that never actually works. We've all seen it, some guy stacks a bunch of logs on a hill, and when they're focused nearby, they cut the rope and all the logs roll down destroying what's below them. Look, even the Ewoks in Star Wars pulled this off. All you need is a bunch of wood and a restraint. Now, the first time I built this, I used a double wide stone ramp consisting of three pieces of stone. I then wanted to try to use the giant spiked balls, but they'd constantly destroy what they were attached to thus breaking the fusion and despawning them. I then crafted double wide logs so they could be added to the auto builder. I then loaded the trap with duplicated logs and now it's time to lure the prey. And when I got my Bokoblin subject up close, I lifted the ramp and, uh, well, that was anticlimactic. Maybe this log will crush him? 
You just chop through it. Nice. Okay, so I think we need a steeper incline. Let's try this staircase to this tower. Adding some logs to the mix now. Okay, all stacked up and now to alert the army. And here we go! Woo! Yeah! Okay, so new idea. The ramp can't be lifted, we have to despawn it. So we're swapping it out with a two-piece ramp that will despawn when split. We are going with a longer hill too. So now the whole camp is down here and I just have to get behind them and plop down our log holder. Okay, logs piled up, released. Every log failed because it was too long. I hate my life. We can't copy single logs, but we can put indestructible stones on both ends, so that it allows us to auto-build a single log without worrying about the attached object breaking. Ramp in place, logs piled up, and this is looking real good. Sorry, but Coblin Army, it's time to meet your maker. Are you kidding me? Again? Less logs, maybe? Okay, I give up. The logs aren't rolling fast enough, and for some reason don't weigh enough to harm the group of bokoblins. So use your imagination, because at some point in the future, I will get this to work. I swear. And now you know why this build is called the log trap that never actually works. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed at least some of these strange primitive builds. If you did, drop a comment letting me know which one you like best. And I'll see all of you in my next video. Cheers!